we're going to start this week's Chase on 40 down on a bit of a sad note. I don't know which sad news to go with first because you've had a bit of a mare, haven't you? It's been one of the worst weeks of my life. What came first? Was it the was it actually? I don't want to give it away. <laughs> was it the the outside news Ooh. or was it the Manchester news? Um, they were both on the same day, a oh, few hours apart, but it was Manchester. The Manchester news came first. It was funny actually because this week I've had my phone out, so no matter what meeting I've been in, I've had it off silent and I've had the little ringer thing mm. on because I've been waiting for some news on something. And the people I've been with know I've been waiting on this news, so they're on tender hooks with me. Is, is, is that is that the news? I'm like, no, 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 it's it's not that. But anyway, the phone goes off on Wednesday afternoon, mm. and I look down at my phone and I go, oh. And everyone goes to me, are you okay? Someone walks up to me, are you okay? I don't, no, no, don't worry, it's not that. It, it, it's not that, it's me, me mate, she's had some terrible news. Go on, do you want to tell us? The Bross concert in Manchester has been cancelled. I can't, I, I haven't even got words. It's not, it's not just that though, isn't it? Isn't there loads of them that being cancelled as well? Well, he cancelled some because apparently, and I think this is a vicious lie, ticket sales weren't fantastic for them. So they did cancel a lot. Stop laughing. <laughs> we discussed this on an earlier episode. <laughs> Beck's one of those deniers though. It just never happens. <laughs> it was due to technical difficulties. That's why, they, was it the Newcastle concert? Yeah. It was that one, wasn't it, that they cancelled? Not poor ticket sales. But do you think maybe that this factored into this one as well? No, no, because this one was, well, I don't think it was sold out by any means. <laughs> I didn't really, put it this way, I didn't have to queue to get my tickets for it. Uh, but yeah, oh, it's just, it's devastating news. I, I, I can't get over it. Honestly, I was so destroyed. My, my last, this could have been my last chance to, to call a mat. It is a bit of a kick in the, the, the you know what, isn't it? When you mm. think about it, really, because it's been how long since that final concert for Bross? Was that the late 80s, early 90s? Early when 90s. Did, early 90s. So you've been waiting 20 odd years. They finally make a comeback. It's sods law, though, isn't it? Because every single band that have made a comeback from yesteryear, they've gone on to have mega success. Mm. The one that you love and your ambition to one day marry, is it Matt or Matt. Luke? Matt, Matt to get that opportunity to marry Matt and say Matt come to me and what happens they make the comeback they announce it and within about three or four months a mixture of poor ticket sales and then a bloody terrorist attack I know so ISIS have done you over there I mean obviously I'm... it's very tragic what happened but it's uh, the, the, the shocks have continued for Beck because as a result of that blum and bomb that's it now mm. no, no more bros and it's not like they're even rescheduling it so I've had a bit of a I've got a bit of a tiz on with them to be honest because I've been cleaning my Grolsch bottle tops in preparation for it I've been scouring <laughs> the internet to find like a denim jacket with a Bross's boogie things on it yeah. I've spent a lot of time and effort in this and I'm honestly I'm at the point now where I'm thinking I'm going to block Matt and I'm going to rip up that picture of me and him on my fireplace I'm very angry <laughs> Grolsch will be fuming now won't he <laughs> yeah. you fucking what <laughs> <laughs> just ordered 67,000 bottle tops like <laughs> We were going to give them out with the bottles, like we were going to sell at the Manchester <laughs> Arena. Gutted. Utterly, I, I, honestly, gutted. And then not only did you have that happen, uh, another feature of Chasing 40, again, refer back to the Nature episode, which mm. I think was episode 13. Mm. Beck was talking about her pride of the garden, because we did that show outside in the garden. She was describing her lovely surroundings, including her, her two bushes. Yeah. So there's a lady bush whose name's Holly, and there's a boy bush and called you, Phil. You'd only just named them as well, hadn't you? Yeah. Holly and Phil, me two holly bushes. And you know, one was a girl because she's got berries on and she can only have berries if the boy's there. So clearly the other bush was a boy. Someone has stolen Phil the holly bush. I think, to be honest, I've looked out. We'll put a picture on at Chasing underscore 40 so you can check out. Because we did, when we did the, the outside show, we, we put a picture to see the lovely surroundings that we were out there. But I think it looks better. What? So the death, can... the death <laughs> of Phil the holly bush to me is not in vain. That's horrible. They've not even dug him up, though. They've not even took his roots. They've just hacked him off at his ankles, so his little stumps are just still protruding. Is it? This is what you could have had. Yeah. And poor Holly now has to spend all of her time staring at the place where her boyfriend used to be. I said to Beck, I was like, you know, it doesn't look too bad. And she, she said, oh, you know what? I really hope they don't get rid of the uh, the female one. I mean, why is that? You know, I've got grand plans for her at Christmas. <laughs> What grand plans have you got for it? Well, I'm going to trim her a bit and sell some of the holly. <laughs> oh, is that what it is? <laughs> but also, I'm going to put lights and baubles on it. That's going to be my oh, outside you know, Christmas tree. I, so, 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 so here we go. Like, we've broken it down now. Because <laughs> I thought it was just going to be you going to decorate it. But well, I am. You, but... you went straight in with that. I was going to trim it and sell it. So you were going to, you were going to prostitute holly <laughs> for your own financial gain. Well, she's got to pay some rent. <laughs> were you going to prostitute Phil as well? 
Well, no, because he didn't have berries, did he? So he could have just kind of hung around and... Yeah. I'd, I'd have adorned him with God, beautiful... you're like some Monty Don type pimp, aren't you? <laughs> I'm the pimp of the holly bush world. I just trim this bush and get out there. Where are you going to sell it? <laughs> it's like a holly shop or something? I've or... got friends who do like crafts. You can make oh. wreaths and... So you ain't going to do like that thing you see on uh, movies in America where the, the little kids are selling lemonade outside the house. <gasps> I could have just stood that. outside with a table. <laughs> holly bush for sale. Yeah. What, we, what would they retail at? Holly bushes? I, don't, I need to... I don't know. I need to have a look. <laughs> but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna build a cage around her so no one can get in and steal my holly. She's go, not having her. There goes your money making scheme then, done Drat. and dusted for 2017. Well, you'd be glad to know, by the way, that my Beatles obsession has finally come to an end. Thankfully, it ended. Yeah, as we record this, it's Saturday morning. It's the 17th of June, 2017. It ended yesterday, so my final post <laughs> was thanking the organisers of all the various Beatle events. It got after, obviously, after we last spoke, I was mm. talking about the George Harrison concert that I'd been on last week's episode. Uh, but I went on to my Indian Raga Fest. I went to. Oh, it. was it good? Oh, it was brilliant. Was was it? it no, it was excellent. Was it? I'm not messing. Okay. But the great thing that's come out of this is now I'm now just totally absorbed in Indian culture Have and with Indian sitar, musicians. Yeah. I haven't no, but I befri- the sitar playing, the one I was talking about, yeah. Yarn, like the uh, the traction engine, yeah. he's now friend with me on Facebook and the old Instagram. I've even sent him. He even asked me if he could have my photos I'd taken and videos so we could share them on his social media. Oh, yes, his name is. Yes, his name is. I've got to refer to Instagram for his name. <laughs> but bear with me. Let me just check my direct messages. Bear with me. You've been direct messaging each yeah. other. Oh, it's love. There he is, Jazz Deep. Look at all those messages. Oh, Hi, look Jeff. at all those kisses. Thanks for your wonderful... No, they're Instagram. <laughs> no, 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 they're, they're sitar notes. <laughs> He's sending me a song. Thanks for your wonderful posts on Instagram. Would you mind sending me the pictures to take a look? And then oh. he sent me his email. And then we struck oh. up a conversation on email. So me and Jazz Deep are like that. Bromance? Yeah, he's the, he's the winner of some Sky Art Academy thing as well, Jazz Deep. So. I need to learn Photoshop and then I can do like a Brokeback Mountain kind of picture of you yeah. too. <laughs> me <laughs> you me and, and Jazz Deep, Deep camping like, <laughs> by the fire with his sitar. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> but I went on to the Raga Fest on Sunday morning. I'm a bit gutted though because I missed something big. I went to the morning Raga Fest, right? Mm-hmm. So basically when I got there, I had this traditional Indian breakfast. Now at first when I saw that it was going to be an Indian breakfast, I was thinking, I've had an Indian breakfast before. It's the leftover curry from the night before. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't. Is it going to be just the same as that? But it was blooming lovely. What was it? I don't know what it was. <laughs> but again, <laughs> I'd have to show you. It was some curry type thing with dips and these pancakey things. Ooh. I tell you what, I'll put a picture again. Go to chasing at underscore forty. I'll put a picture with the link to this week's show, and you can tell me what it is. It, it's it's like a there was like a <laughs> this is the worst. Can I show you a picture and yes. you can try and describe it for me? <laughs> You're better at these things. This is why you do the I'm show with me. Better at describing food than you. <laughs> There's Here my epitaph. Go. Oh, oh, you took I'm... a lot of pictures of Jazz Deep, didn't you? No, that's not Jazz Deep. Oh, that's my other mates. Oh. Yeah, I'll tell you who that is in a oh, minute. Exciting. There we go. There's me okay. on my own because no one would go with me. <laughs> There's the breakfast, y'all. What? Oh, well, they're I mean? like that's like um, like pita bread, isn't it? It it it, it looks then... like pita bread, but it's it's not. They, those things had fillings there. When you're looking at the, by the way, because the... that looks like yogurt. Yeah, that, that one does look like curry. That was like a yogurt. That was a curry. That one looks like scrambled eggs. It's, that was like a sort of mashed potato type thing. And the other one looks... Look right now, by the way, so you can see what we're talking about. It's at Chaser underscore 40, and you'll see it on there. You'll see the little picture. It's like in a little Lunchables carton, isn't it? It was absolutely <laughs> lovely, honestly. It was a great way to start the day. And then afterwards, I had a little concert that I attended, and that was with the uh, the amazing Pandit Ranjit and Kusak Sen. And they, and they, they were, you were the friends. Yeah, look at them. Yeah, here we go. Do you want, do you want to hear a little bit of Please. them? Please. Here we go. Let's see. Um, here we go. What are you laughing at? <laughs> that's that's some good musicianship. It's lovely. Here we go. Let's have a little more. No, that that thing was again with the instruments. I'm still trying to get up on my Indian instruments at the moment. I'm currently stuck at sitar <laughs> and bongo type instruments <laughs> and other thing which looks like a sitar and sounds like a sitar, but it isn't a sitar. That bloke there who's playing that sitar like instruments. Yeah, that was 26 strings, right? 
wow. I had no threats and I, I've honestly and the guy with the, the bongo type things which yeah. I can't call bongos they're called something else well done on the hand movement there <laughs> Beck you should have seen him he was like Keith Moon he's like the Indian Keith Moon I'm not messing I just don't them, them Indian classical musicians are like the, the most amazing athletes in the world how they keep going with the playing the sitar they go faster they slow down they go faster again but the stuff he was doing with them he's like a maniac <laughs> The Usain Bolt of the uh, Indian oh, music world. Honestly, I, I've now become, like that, as I say, I, I, I've, I've become a bit of an aficionado of Indian classical music. So you have, yeah. I mean, you can tell by scene. the terminology that you're using, the bongo type things and the sitar type thing. But I've found there's another, there's another festival, there's another celebration oh, of Indian art, which I'm going to, and that is, I think it's the tail end of July, so I'm going to see Bongo Man again. <laughs> yeah, he's there. <laughs> Groupy. Jazz Deep isn't going to be there, which is a bit sad. So oh. uh, maybe, you know, when we go camping again next year, we'll, yeah. we'll catch up about that. <laughs> But if you want to see the bit, honestly, you've got hearing the sound there. That's one thing. But seeing the guy move, I've got the videos and they're on my Instagram. So you, again, if you look in the description for wherever you listen to Chasing Forty Two right now, you'll find the details where you can check out where you can contact me or Beck all on there. But if you go on the Instagram, which mine is twenty nine underscore Nolan, yeah, if you go on there, you'll you'll be able to have a look at it. So there's loads of videos, and there's even the, there's even a video of, of Jazz Deep. Who we played because he was the one. Well, we I would hope it'd be week. a video of your boyfriend, to be perfectly oh, honest. Yeah. What a man! What a man! What a man! What a man! <laughs> you get like a dreamy look over your face when you think about him. I'm not messing. It's really sweet. I was mesmerised, but the thing that I missed out on and I was absolutely gutted. But it's probably a good thing for her is I discovered after that concert there was like an Indian festival I went to. Um, and there was more concerts. George Harrison's missus is well, is 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 widow Olivia mm. Harrison. She attended one of them. It's a good job I didn't spot her because Blimey. I literally she she'd still be there now at St George's Hall because I'm <laughs> as anyone who knows no, me you'd knows. No, be in jail. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm obsessed with George Harrison. George is my favourite Beatle. So it's like I've got this massive book, I Me Mine, which has just been re-released, and it is like that. It's like massive, like coffee table book with mm. all his lyrics. It, the, basically the closest you'll get to a George Harrison autobiography pictures everything to do with George Harrison everything he ever created is in this book that's like my bible so <laughs> I reference that have finished it yet? no but I just <laughs> I, it it's, I, I treat it like the bible you know where people go oh you know what I've had a bad day today I'm going to go mm. to John 416 or yeah. Palm 317 stuff like that I go you know what I've had a bad day or I'm thinking about doing something I know I'll consult me George Harrison book so I'll pick it up and I find a song and I look at the handwritten lyrics for something and go hmm I wonder what the story is behind that and it tells you what it, it George describes why he wrote that song and where he was and that's that's how I live my life <laughs> and I just use a coin toss app or a magic yeah. eight ball <laughs> see I'm a, I'm a deep thinking individual <laughs> So I'd love to. There has been some other stuff that doesn't involve Indian music, by the way, and me obsessing over George Harrison. That's happened Very this little, week. Very little, but <laughs> I did. Um, I did. It's a knockout this week as well. Did you? Didn't you see the? See the oh yes, of that? I did. Yeah, because there was a whole debate about someone getting stretched off doing it years ago that we used to work with, wasn't there? Yeah, which by the way did happen. I'm it pretty did. sure. Yeah, and that was that was one of the reasons why I was dead dead worried. Now, uh, for, again, if you're in the UK, listen to us right now. You'll know what it's a knockout is. If you're not in the UK, and we know we've got lots of listeners who listen to the show in Germany, Russia. Ukraine, yeah, all over the place, Australia, <laughs> Canada, and America, you might not know what that is, but basically it is just a giant inflatable course with loads mm. of ridiculous wacky games, um, lots of them involving foam, and the thing is with these things is, whereas they look great and you think, oh, if you fall on the inflatable thing, that's fine, but it's coming on and off these things where the injuries happen. Yeah. So I was terrified going into it. All I could think about was me just flying off one of these giant inflatables. Me leg, like, stuck behind me neck <laughs> in some sort of weird, like, what is it, contortionist yeah. type pose. <laughs> you do have and a then, habit of dodgy injuries, don't you? Well, so, you after, know. It, let's be honest about it. I couldn't even drink in a 70s bar a few weeks ago <laughs> without doing some sort of acrobatic manoeuvre and flying into the air. Which, by the way, again, don't want to, you know, have a go with the Blum um, and National Health Service over here. I go there, have an x-ray, they tell me it's not broken. I'm still in the same amount of pain three weeks on. Do you want me to put something on it? Like, a, I don't know. What, like what? Do you want, do you want what some you magic pills? <laughs> I don't know. You rub your holly bush on me or something? <laughs> Look, then, yeah, there you go. You just heard her first hand there. What did she just say then? Yeah, she said, do you want some magic pills? It might help. 
So you, people think I'm just telling stories or making these things up. A few weeks back on the show, I was talking about it. Every time I come around with any ailments, I've even been in here with hay fever. She said, "Do you want some of my magic pills?" Now, once again, I realise there may be people downloading the show for the first time this week, and they'll be thinking Beck's some sort of drug dealer. Listen back. Yeah, listen back, and you, you'll find out what her magic pills are. No, I don't want your bloody magic okay. pills. Stop, well, stop whinging about it then. Don't know what you want me to do. I just want someone to review me X-ray again. But that was what I was worried about. I was thinking, I can't even have a pint in a 70s bar without flying through the air mm. and ending up on my arse. God knows what's going to happen to me <laughs> here. And true to form, there was a few comedy incidents. Was there? Yeah, there was one where we had to... Uh, the, the fo- Funny enough, the foam ones, I was all right. I, I, was, I, I didn't really get that too injured. It was the ones where you just had to run through at speed. And there was this one, like a jigsaw game, where you had to run through this, jump on the bouncy castle and like, run through it. And there was loads of little obstacles mm. you had to get round. That was easy. So getting on it getting off to get the thing was fine and then I had to run back with a piece and then once we put this jigsaw thing together we then had to take it all apart again so at that's, this point you come to the end of the game and it's whoever gets back first is the winner mm. so one person goes at a time and first time I did it fine no problem whatsoever second time I was running back over with a piece I'm carrying something which slows me down on the way back I, I, obviously I didn't realise how fast I can run I got I'd say three quarters of the way along the bouncy castle thing I got through the last <laughs> the last obstacle and you know you just think to yourself I'm fucking going here man <laughs> and me leg started buckling and I'm not messing like a torpedo I hit the floor and bounced in the air and I was like please land please land on the pattern and I just boom, ow and it was grass I landed on oh my god me hips me back I was just lying on the floor and it was at that point I heard and I looked and I could see someone running at full speed towards me <laughs> so I had to do this like roll honestly I wish someone had it on camera because it would have looked like some sort of Hollywood stunt yeah. <laughs> one minute I'm flying through the air then I fall on the grass and I do this big mad roll but, but yeah I got through that on uh, on I think that was, th- it was Thursday afternoon we did that and it was really good course raising money for um, Age UK Bernardo's which are a children's charity over here and also the victims of the recent terror attacks and collectively with the guys that I was doing it with and the, everyone that was there I think at the end of the day they said something like 17 and a half grand had been raised so it was well worth near enough breaking my yeah, back definitely. and all the grass burns that's what the other thing as well I haven't had grass burns on my knees since I was a kid <laughs> I've forgotten how painful they are <laughs> Jesus so I, I, I'm full of grass burns <laughs> sore back and sore hips uh, but that that's um, that's been my that, my week. <laughs> <laughs> it's been very eventful. <laughs> <laughs> Normally I come here and say I've done absolutely nothing apart from work, but that that, that has been that. Hey, you know what? I saw something through the week, and I, I I I mentioned it on one of the radio shows that I was doing, and straight away people got in touch with me. But I thought I'll get your opinion on this because mm. you are my guru when it comes to all things fashion. Um, right. The but we've had this discussion. It made me laugh because I remember ten years ago, me and you doing a radio show, <laughs> we were talking about this. But when I was coming out of my Indian festival mm. last Sunday, I was walking through a shopping centre, and these three girls walked towards me, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Hang on!" And I looked at them. They all had bum bags on. If you're in America, a fanny pack. Yeah. Now, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, bum bags finished in like the, I'd say, late 80s, early 90s. Because at one point I looked at them as they were coming towards me and I thought, you know what? Have I taken something at this Raga Fest? Or have I, because <laughs> I know I've had a few bangs on the head and I've had a few falls recently. Am I concussed or has some sort of life on Mars moment type thing happened where I've gone back in time? So quickly, I pulled out my iPhone to look at the date and then I realised when I got the iPhone out that if it was in the 80s the <laughs> iPhone wasn't invented so I haven't gone back in time so this was real mm-hmm. so yeah there was three girls wearing bum bags now I'm reliably informed now that they are back in fashion well they kind of they are and they're not and I love a good bum bag I think they're extremely handy and I hope they do come back for, I've got about three yeah. um, but I've got them for work so when I'm doing kind of setting up weddings Cash and, and events and stuff. stuff I can keep like pins yeah. and bits and bobs in it so I've got my hands free but they made a comeback a couple of years ago for festivals Right. Because they're, they're a bit, well, are they safe to know? Because you can just unclick yeah. them at the back and nick off with them. But it means you can kind of keep your money and your phone and yeah. your keys and everything in them. And you've still got two hands to kind of dance around, yeah. wave your glow sticks and drink your beer. Um, but I didn't think they'd come back in terms of mainstream, let's just walk around the shops. Well, this is the thing. I'm glad you've you've explained that to me because when I mentioned this on the radio show, the breakfast show that I was doing through the week, a couple of people got in touch with me and said, yeah, they are back in fashion. And the reason they're back in fashion is down to a couple of celebrities, one of which was that Blum and Jenna girl. The one that uh, the wore one who my nicks your clothes. Yeah, the one who nicked my fucking clothes. Again, check out earlier episodes for this one. But 
I'm thinking to myself then, all right, well, if, if that's the case, if she's bought that back and that's mainstream now whenever I'm wearing the bum bags, why hasn't the same thing happened for my T-shirt? Why am I still getting funny looks with my NWO logo shirt? Because your stuff was never cool to start with. It was cool. <laughs> it was. My, my stuff was cooler later than the bum bags. It was 1996. Well, thank God relevant. it's not come round yet then. Give it another 10 years and we'll all be dressing like you. So that's that's where the, it comes from. So bum bags are back. It's, it's not something... They're just an isolated incident with, no. with three girls. Bring on the shell suits. Hey, talking of uh, Glastonbury and the festivals, that's all happening next week. Um, I st- every year I say the same thing. Have you ever been to a festival? Um, the closest thing I went, I went to see um, Oasis in Loch Lomond, which was like a two-day thing, and that was amazing. But I don't, I don't do camping and stuff, so I just slept in my car. Um, not for the whole thing. I did yeah. get out and actually go and see Oasis perform. I'm sleeping and in my jar on pills for my nerves. <laughs> yeah, my magic pills. Um, but no, that's that's the closest I've been. I'd love to do. I would love to do Glastonbury, but I wouldn't like to do Glastonbury. It's the camping thing, isn't it? That's yeah. the thing. That that for me. I remember back, and it's coming up to the twentieth anniversary of this happening. Um, when I worked at a radio station in Liverpool back in 1998, 99, I think this was, and I'd always said I want to go to a festival, I want to go to a festival, and the program controller, the guy there at the radio station, sorry, it was a girl actually, the woman, she um, sorted me out with tickets to, I think it was the V Festival, mm. or whatever the equivalent of that was back then, Reading one, and it wasn't Glastonbury, there was another festival, I think it was Tea, Tea in, the in the Park, yeah, now I had tickets, I had passes, like backstage passes, mm. I say backstage passes, they have like a backstage arena yeah. for them where everyone, it's a bit more of a, you know, you, you don't have to queue as long for the toilet and stuff, so I had all them lined up and I was like, right, I'm going to go for it, and then at the last minute I thought, I can't be bothered camping, I'm not going to go, so all of them went to waste. <laughs> oh. So from that point on, every single year when it's come round, friends have been saying to me, oh, do you want to go to a festival? Do you want to go do this? I'm thinking, well, I had the chance to do it with the, with yeah. the VIP thing and I blew it. So I don't think, if I didn't fancy that, I'm not going to fancy just being in with the uh, the, the normal, the ordinary folk. Yeah. I could be well, saying I could that, that. I could the, normal, the folk, normal folk, as if I'm like Gandhi, <laughs> you know. I could do like the glamping thing, you know, those wooden huts that yeah. we have, but they cost an absolute fortune. But They I don't, don't do I don't that, do though, with the times. music festivals, do they? I, I, think don't think. They, I think they do, but they're like, further out on the outskirts and then you've just got to hike to get in and then you lose your wellies because it rains and it's too much stress I'll just watch it on telly well a couple of years ago well about I think it was 2008 now the the next time I got close to Glastonbury and I have technically you could say I've been to Glastonbury because Glastonbury isn't even in Glastonbury by the way the village of Glastonbury is next it's Pilton isn't it Pilton mm, Farm is where it all yeah. happens in 2008 it was the Kings of Leon I think were the main headline act on the Friday night and I was going to visit a mate in Yeovil and of all the times I picked to go and visit him, he lived down there for like how long I picked the weekend at Glastonbury. <laughs> so don't I don't even want to get started on how long it took me to get down there. But I remember driving through the village of Glastonbury and I could see in the background, like far, far away, the pyramid stage and have the windows open. I mm. could hear the king. I think I'm pretty sure it was the Kings of Leon playing. So when I got down, so I'm down there for Glastonbury. And I remember thinking to myself, you know what, I, I really could have attended it. And it didn't come up in conversation at all. Then the Sunday morning I was lying on my mate's floor. Um, still half drunk from the mm. night before I, he did have a bed for me by the way in a couch but I couldn't make it to either of them it was one of those Saturday nights so I'm lying on the floor and I hear you know, the, the mailbox so I'm thinking I was getting a letter I thought either hey, I've slept through to Monday or the postman down in Yeovil delivers on a Sunday so I w- walked to the door and I looked and my mate who worked at a radio station down there was get, he, literally someone had dropped off for him some VIP passes for, and it was Neil Diamond and the Verve playing that Sunday. Wow. It was like a drinks voucher, all sorts of stuff for bloody Glastonbury. And I'm going to be mate, why aren't you? <laughs> Yesterday we were in the Mega Bowl. You had these <laughs> passes all along, and you didn't feckin' tell me. <laughs> He's like, oh, I didn't think you'd, you'd want to go because you've never really talked. You, you mentioned that years ago in the nineties about those festivals you had tickets and you didn't go, so I just thought you wouldn't be interested. So you went bowling instead. So that's what I've, I've thought to myself in recent years. Like it's just not meant to be. I've had so I could have been a VIP at the, them festivals in the late nineties, and I could have been to the Neil Diamond and the Verve thing. And he had a cracker time. Like he, he, he didn't stay there. He just had the whole day. Yeah. The the backstage area, but yeah. So just, I don't think me and festivals are meant to be. But I was looking down the uh, who's going to be on for Glastonbury, and. I don't know what Radiohead are there Katy Perry cool. this year you've got Ed Sheeran um, Foo Fighters which should be quite cool but I was looking to see if any because you always have like a novelty act yeah. there don't you Bross yeah. <laughs> Bross definitely aren't there oh. but one name that I did see on there and I was thinking I never even knew he sung Kiefer Sutherland is playing Glastonbury really? yeah the act you know 24 yeah. the actor the lost boy yeah. he is playing Glastonbury 
So I thought, now maybe it's just another key for Sutherland. Yeah. But then like, I'm thinking, Common myself, name. would it be if you if you were in show business or any form of media? And you were called Kiefer Sutherland. You'd change it, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, you, you probably you, have to because there's that, what's it called? So I clicked on it, Kiefer Sutherland. He's on like one of the sort of novelty stages. I think it's Sunday. In fact, actually, I'll tell you what he's on because I've got it here. So I thought I'll get this. Let me have a look. Doesn't say what stage he's on here because I've only snipped it, but it is a Sunday, uh, 1650 to 1750. So he's on for an hour after Lucy Rose and before Lisi. <laughs> Kiefer Sutherland is playing. So I clicked on it. Kiefer Sutherland music website yeah. come up clicked on one of the videos it is the Kiefer Sutherland but he's like a proper country singer ah uh, my old man went to the it bar is. and he bought me some moonshine <laughs> it's all that stuff but he's got he's got a really good voice he's got honestly a proper country voice I'm going to have to have a look now I was like how has he kept that quiet how do I not know that Kiefer Sutherland is, is a singer and he's got a singing career I've never I, no I didn't know it's like did you know Steven Seagal remember him when he announced his music yes. career yes yeah, he's actually well, not too bad k- 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 when you hear some of his songs well, in the mm. early 90s it sort of fits mm. it's that acoustic yeah. type thing I nearly interviewed uh, Stephen Seagal when he did a gay, the Philharmonic where I was at for the Indian concert the other week um, he was playing there many many years back and I remember finding out way in advance so I thought that'd be great to interview mm. Stephen Seagal be quite cool he's a, an 80s novelty action hero so I uh, put a thing through to his management, got an email back saying, yeah, it might be possible. Then honest to God, Beck, I'm not messing. It, what followed was about four months of like negotiation. Mm. It was like the KGB I was dealing with. <laughs> it was like the Secret Service where they were quizzing me on my intentions of wh- when I could go down there, what I'd be asking Steven Seagal. I was made firmly aware that any movie talk was off limits and it was all about, and it was this specific music type. In the end, I was just like, you know what? <laughs> Sod this off. Do you know what? You see, you go to interview the wrong people at the Phil. That's where I interviewed Shake and Stevens and I didn't have to jump through any hoops. In fact, I don't even know I said I worked for a radio station. I think I just said, can I meet him and interview him? How did it go? By the way, because Shakey's quite volatile, isn't he? It was brill. It was afterwards. And he kissed me on the cheek, so I had like shaky sweat on my cheek and I was like, I'm never washing it. Because he was my... Shake Stevens was my first love. Was he wearing all denim, by the way? No, he'd moved. He wore a suit on stage, but when I met him, <laughs> he'd have been in his sixties. He had like a, a checked shirt and like a, a quilted body warmer that you would wear if you were going fishing. Oh, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh no, you look like my dad. The funny thing is with Shake and Stevens, and I always love seeing interviews with him because he legitimately thinks he should be regarded as the English. I know he thinks of himself as the English Elvis. He was the biggest selling artist of the year. No, 80s. I know. But, and if you see him, I, I've never interviewed him. I know people who have, and obviously yeah. y- yourself there, but he thinks he should be because now if you look back on Shake and St- With a name like Shake and Stevens, though, you, how can you be really. Back then, maybe, all right, it worked. It was but... cool because he had the leg thing going on. I know, but like Shaking Stevens now just sounds like some sort of like Butlins actor. It's better it? than Michael Barrett. That's just a boring name. That's his real name, isn't it? You can't just go around Michael Barrett. I don't know, though. It maybe. All right. Don't yeah. be dissing him. Michael Barrett. Careful no, where I'll, you go I'm, here. I'm trying to rebrand him there, thinking Barrett. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's called himself Barrett. Barrett. Yeah, Sponsored by Barrett Homes, if they're even still going. Oh. But yeah, Shaky, if you see interviews with him or if you look up, you'll you'll just see constantly in the last 10, 15 years, constant, every time he does an interview, he just goes on about how he's not taken seriously yeah. anymore. But I just think, when I think of Shaky, I just think of songs like Green Door and well, This Old House and all that. Proper good music. Yeah, but they're not exactly classics, are they? A Merry Christmas, everyone. All right, now, that, you've on. got me on that, but come on, it's the, the, the cheese I had to go at him for that. Mix. That and he was really lovely about it because I wrote to him, I wrote to Jim will fix it uh, when I was little. You wrote to Jim will fix it. What <laughs> was Jim will fix it back? <laughs> it's a program where you you wrote to the program and asked if you could like meet someone or do something. Yeah, I'll just explain this one to our US, <laughs> Ukraine, and foreign listeners over in you know all around the world. Jim will fix it. Basically, was a TV show presented by a man we now know to be the most prolific paedophile in the history of the world. Right, where the BBC, our beloved broadcaster, state broadcaster over here, uh, encouraged young children like myself and Beck to write to Jim, and as we now know, an absolute predatory paedophile, yeah. and tell us our hopes and dreams, and ha- ask him to fix it for us. And then go on the telly and then sit on his knee. Then go on the telly knee. and sit on his knee, and then he'd give us a medal. <laughs> yeah, honestly, that, that shit happens. Just type in Jimmy Savile into yeah. Google for people outside the UK. Maybe not if you're on your work computer, you might not want to do that. But yeah, I, I wrote and I wanted to meet Shaky and he never fixed it for me. Um, and then for Christmas, I must only have been like six or seven, I got um, Shake and Stevens Greatest Hits, volume one on yeah. VHS. And um, it's the video for Merry Christmas, everyone. And he kisses a little girl on the oh, cheek. Yeah. And she 
won that off Jim will fix it she? that should have been me she stole your dream so I went off on this big massive rant at Shaky and he kissed me <laughs> with his sweaty face I'm surprised I'm surprised from. you haven't got a picture of that on your mantelpiece as well next to the dead cat I'm like, well the thing <laughs> is if you, you still have got it yeah the way things are going with Bross as we discussed at the start of this show <laughs> that might be getting off getting the boot might yeah. so Shaky might be replacing them I did get a wedding card off him when I got married Shaky and Stevens mm-hmm. I've still got it and he only he only put he must have known something because he only put me on it he didn't put Andy's name <laughs> it was just two Beck happy wedding day Shaky and Stevens how cool is that you'll have to show me that or yeah. dig it out have you got it somewhere we yeah, can get a picture and put it on yeah let's dig that out and get a picture at some point through the week on our chase and underscore 40 and I'm trying to think about what we now went on to the subject of Jim will fix it what did I write to him for I wrote yeah that was it I wrote twice once I wanted to play Goodison I was once to play which I, I did you as we all know yeah, I, I fixed that thanks, thanks for nothing Jim um, <laughs> and then the next one I thought to myself because he didn't respond I was thinking right you know what maybe it's just because he, he, he doesn't fancy coming up to Liverpool or it's a bit boring so what I'll do is I'll, I'll change it so I just li- li- literally so I just literally wrote the same letter, but crossed out Goodison and put Wembley in. <laughs> Bastard ignored me. But in hindsight, it was yeah, probably for the I think best. we had lucky escapes there. There we go. We began with talk of Holly Bushes, Bross, and we ended with Jim will fix him. <laughs> Back to the 80s. We've covered such a diverse amount of topics on this week's Chase and 40. Right, that is just about it from us this week. By the way, there's a good chance that we may not be around next week, so do not despair. I've got to fly off on a jet plane somewhere. <laughs> so we're, we're going to see what we can do with regards to getting an episode of Chasing 40 next week. But if you're not, um, if you check back next Sunday or you don't see anything dropping your iTunes, do not despair. Just revisit some of the old episodes. We're on to episode, are we on to 15 now or 16? 15 or 16. I've lost count. Yeah, it's, it's 16. Confusing. 16, yes, yes we are. Episode 16. Four months. As we chase 40, our minds, our memories get worse. <laughs> do like, you know what we've hit as well? Can I just point out, it's now less than six months till I'm 40. Is it? Yeah. <gasps> Moment of silence while that sinks in and I go and cry. And then we change the name of the podcast to Chasing 41. <laughs> but that's the plan all bloody along. I thought you were 40. <laughs> you were supposed to be 40 and I was chasing you. <laughs> chasing. And then you tell me I'm only 39. I'm like, Jesus, Ben. <laughs> I'm 39 and a half now. Maybe so I just not. drank too much Guinness that day when we had this plan. <laughs> Anyway, yes, so we're not here next week. That is why. Don't worry, but we'll be back the following week. Look, have yourself a great week. Remember, check out all the previous episodes and also give us a like, give us a follow, give us a subscribe. Quite a lot of new uh, subscribers on SoundCloud this week. I think it was about like 18 or 19 people. Uh, So uh, hello to all you. Welcome aboard and check out the previous episodes. Have a great week. And uh, hopefully if you weren't too offended by the stuff that we talked about (laughs) on this week's show, we'll see you next time.